Main Man Made Man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing, man. We are on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen, of a real good fight this weekend, man. And I'm really looking forward to this fight. We got Andre the Beast Birdo versus Sean Showtime Porter, man. This is a fight that I'm really looking forward to seeing because this is such a pivotal fight in both fighters' careers, man. I said in my last video leading up to this fight that this is the fight that can return either fighter back to the elite level. With uh, Showtime Sean Porter coming off a loss against Keith One Time Thurman, in which that was a major, major fight in his career, man. He took a loss in that particular fight. And, uh, and with Andre Berto, you know, he came off those losses when he suffered them to Luis, uh, to uh, Victor Ortiz and to Robert Guerrero and stuff like that. He went through those rough, that rough patch. He didn't look stellar against fighters like Jotecito Lopez, uh, Luis Calazo, you know. And so a lot of people started to write off Andre Berto. You know, he was so injured. He was going through so many complications with his body and his shoulder and stuff like that. So a lot of people wrote off Andre Berto. So Andre Berto has been since kind of fighting his way back to prominence. You know what I mean? He beat Luis Ortiz. I mean, he, Luis Ortiz. He beat Victor Ortiz in a rematch. Um, though people say he didn't look stellar against Josecito Lopez, he did fin manage to stop Josecito uh, Lopez. And this was after, you know, he was going through his rehabilitation from his shoulder and everything. So he has been kind of fighting his way back to prominence, trying to get back into the elite conversation where he once was for quite some time. And in Showtime Sean Porter's, I wouldn't say that he's quite not elite anymore because he's still one of the top names at welterweight. But I would say that, you know, after him losing, getting to the top and losing to Keith Thurman, not only not only that, he lost to Kell Brook. Um, yeah, he beat Adrian Bronner, but no one sees Adrian Bronner as an elite fighter. It can be said that Andre, uh, that Showtime Sean Porter hasn't really had a big win in a minute. I thought the, uh, the Adrian Bronner fight should have been a big win, but if you don't view Adrian Bronner as an A-level fighter, then you can't say that Showtime Sean Porter beat an elite dude in quite some time since, honestly, his defeat of Devin Alexander when he took the title off. So this is something that people need to see from Showtime Sean Porter. So this this is the reason I said that this particular fight can return either fighter back to prominence and back to the elite level, man. So that's going to be awesome, man. All right, let's get into the characteristics of both fighters. You got Andre Berto, first and foremost. What does Andre Berto do well, and what does he not do so well? Well, Andre Berto, man, the number one thing you'll notice from Andre Berto is that he has an extremely wide stance, man. He always tends to drag his back foot a lot, and uh, it, 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 his foot movement is not quite as smooth as most a lot of boxers, you know what I'm saying? Andre Berto drags his back foot a lot, and he keeps an extremely wide stance, making it harder for him to get away from a lot of punches, in my opinion. Now, Andre Berto, from what I noticed of him, he prefers to be the aggressor. You know what I mean? Which I'm expecting a lot of fireworks in this fight because I'm not expecting uh, Showtime Sean Porter to back down from Andre Berto. But he likes to be the aggressor in the fight, and he does not fight nearly as well when he is not the aggressor, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, and due to his footwork, it makes him tend to jump in and then try to jump out, but he doesn't do it nearly as fast. This is what got him knocked down against Victor Ortiz in their second fight. When he jumped in and he jumped right into a straight left hand and he got a flash knockdown in that particular fight. This is what Andre Berto does. And against a very aggressive fighter, a guy who's going to be a bulldozer in Showtime Sean Porter, Port, uh, I mean, Berto is going to need to really use his fucking feet, man, to get in and get out properly. So I would highly advise him not to use that super wide of a stance that he's grown so accustomed to using. Uh, Andre Berto likes to paw his jab a lot. He likes to measure himself. He likes to paw, smack against your glove, smack against your glove, judge his distance, and then come in with his attack. That's what he likes to normally do. Uh, he can be countered. And against a guy like Showtime Sean Porter, he won't have much time to paw out a jab against him. Because if he continuously looks to paw out jabs, Showtime Sean Porter is going to be throwing fucking haymakers, man. Real talk. The one thing that Andre Berto has maintained even through his injuries to this day 
It's his hand speed. Man, hand speed has always been solid. He throws combinations very, very well, and he throws them very fucking fast, man, and with good power. That's something that Andre Berto has tend to not have lost over these years, man. His power has still been intact, hence him stopping Victor Ortiz. Hence him stopping Louis, um, uh, uh, Josecito Lopez. His power never really diminished, you know what I mean? And that is something that Showtime Sean Porter should be advised of. Let's not forget, Sean Porter walked into an uppercut from Adrian Bronner in the 12th round of their fight. And it put him on his ass. Well... Andre Berto has the ability to do that and then some. He does have the power to put Showtime Sean Porter on his ass and possibly for good. You know what I mean? The thing is, though, with Andre Berto that he lacks body work. I can never understand. He focuses so much upstairs. He never gives enough attention downstairs. And to a guy like Showtime Sean Porter, who's going to be coming nonstop for most part of the fight. Well, that can be the big deciding factor. You hitting him in downstairs or not, will he tire out a lot faster? Will he burn a lot of gas? And you can help him burn that gas much faster by going downstairs, Andre Berto. So those are some of the things. You look on the Showtime Sean Porter side of things. The number one thing you'll say about Sean Porter is he is aggressive. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And I'm almost honestly thinking that him and his daddy, Kenny Porter, are getting to a point where they honestly tired of hearing that shit, man. And I think Ken Porter is really trying to arm his son at this point with different tools. But I don't know if Sean Porter once hit, like the old Mike Tyson say, uh, saying goes, everybody got a game plan until they get hit. It's like Sean Porter is one of those guys, once he gets hit, he goes back to what he knows best and what he instinctively does well. And that's become aggressive, sometimes reckless, smothering himself but to become extremely aggressive try to pin his opponent down and hit him with everything but the kitchen sink you know so i think they want to get that stigma off him i don't know if they really like people constantly saying that and everybody under the sun knows that's the number one thing you observe from sean porter and if you know how to nullify that say like kel brook did you'll win every time because he goes back to that every fucking time this is why keith thurman was able to matador him so well this is why Kell Brook knew exactly the game plan to come in there. I'm going to hold him when he's close and aggressive and trying to throw all these shots and bucking and all that. And when I, when, But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I get that good one-two and pop, pop, hold. One-two, hold. One-two, hold. It worked like a charm because Showtime Sean Porter not only did not adjust, he didn't switch gears by far. You know what I'm saying? So we know he's aggressive, smothers his punches, throws the game plan out the window a lot. Um, but some of the good things that he does, does he, he swings with extreme conviction. So if he senses that you are a pillow puncher or you cannot take his aggression, he is going to come with extreme conviction in his punches. Hence, the same way he did against Paulie Malinaji. He decapitated Paulie Malinaji, if you will, because he knew he had a guy in front of him that could not only stop his aggression, but couldn't hurt him with punches. And so he threw with extreme conviction and he tried to take Paulie Malinaji's fucking head off, man. You know, and that's what he does. You know what I mean? He works well at the body. One of the biggest shots that Keith Thurman got hit with and that sent Keith Thurman on his bicycle against Showtime Sean Porter was the body work. Whenever Adrian Bronner tried to attempt to hold Showtime Sean Porter, which he did not do nearly as successful as Kell Brook did. What was Sean Porter doing? He was bucking and hitting Adrian Bronner to the body. I love the body work from Showtime Sean Porter. You know what I mean? It's 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 always good to see that from Sean Porter because if he can mix the upstairs, downstairs mix up, he faints very well. So does Andre Berto. He faints very well as well. But he faints and he can keep Andre Berto off guard. Those body shots will be devastating to Berto, man. Fucking devastating. The thing with Showtime Sean Porter, he always comes to fight and he's very well disciplined. Well, at least until he gets hit. You know what I'm saying? But what I mean by discipline, like between fights, this kid ain't missing no weigh-ins, man. He's always disciplined, keeping his body in shape, staying right up under his father. His father's keeping that third eye on him at all times, making sure he does not get off the path. 
So he's he's focused, he's disciplined, and he is always in fucking shape, man. I like that about Sean Porter. He's a good, humble guy, man. I really do, man. I ain't no fan of how his daddy be always trying to steal a TV time and shit. But when it comes to Showtime Sean Porter, man, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I like this dude. He's a humble dude, man. And he's the type of champion. It, you know, if he wins a belt, he won't have no problem fighting the best that the division has to offer. It's just who he is, man. I like that about Showtime Sean Porter. So his body work, phenomenal. Not to mention his stamina levels are always good. You know, he slowed down in the Adrian Bronner fight. He even slowed down a bit in the Keith Thurman fight, I thought. But not to the point that he was not a threat and not to the point that he had nothing left. Despite the aggression and come forwardness and, uh, and always throwing a bunch of punches and all this stuff, uh, breaking away from holes and always being tied up, Showtime Sean Porter just fucking keeps on coming. Him and Triple G are like the Jason Voorhees of boxing and shit. No matter what you hit them with, they come constantly are coming to your ass. You know what I'm saying? So his stamina rate, man, has always been impressive to me when it came down to Showtime Sean Porter. So those are the, some of the things that they both fighters do good. Some of the things that both fighters do bad. Now, who wins this fight and why? Well, my prediction would go for the winner of this fight. And I'm going to say, by unanimous decision, I'm going to give it to Showtime Sean Porter. Reason being, I believe that Showtime Sean Porter would be just a bit too much for Andre Berto in this particular point in his career. Like I stated earlier in this video, Sean Porter likes to be the aggressor. I don't think that's something that, I mean, uh, Andre Berto, I'm sorry, likes to be the aggressor. And I don't think that's something that Sean Porter is going to give to Andre Berto. And if Andre Berto cannot fight in the manner of the aggressor, he's not nearly as successful. He's not nearly, also, his accuracy levels are not nearly as good when he's fighting going backwards. It's already not as that great with him coming forward, but it's never that great when he's going backwards. Um, I think leading up to this fight, seeing how, I'm not saying that Andre Berto resisted this fight, but he wasn't gripping this fight with open arms, you know. When you seen Sean Porter out in the public and in interviews and stuff like that trying to make this fight happen, it was Andre Berto who was, oh, you got to call Al. You know how to make fights. We don't make fights in the public. I'm not listening to him. He know I don't think. It's almost as if he wasn't fully embracing this fight, in my opinion. And you know when a guy is fully running towards something and he ain't. Like, when Sean Porter was trying to make this fight, you seen how Sean Porter was. He was lit. He was doing whatever he had. He was doing whatever he had to do to get this fucking fight. This was the fight that he wanted, and you see that on Sean Porter. He, you don't see that quite from Andre Berto. You know what I'm saying? I think Andre Berto is still a good fighter, win, lose, or draw in this fight. I think the man has extreme heart, and this is the reason I say he's not going to be stopped. I look at the heart that he has displayed not only throughout his career and in his fights being knocked down and still coming back and winning fights, being able to stop his opponent. You know, those are big traits to me. Those are heartfelt traits to me. And when you have heart, I just don't think it's going to be an easy walk in the park, even though he may still lose. But I don't I don't see him being stopped. Maybe knocked down once, maybe twice. But stopped, I don't see it. Um, I think his wide stance is going to prove to be extremely detrimental to him. I think that's going to be the key. He's not going to be able to get away from Showtime Sean Porter nearly as fast. Um, I think he has the ability to counter Sean Porter and to time Sean Porter coming in. But due to his accuracy, man, it's not going to be frequent enough, in my opinion. I think he'll counter Sean Porter in spots. He'll even hit Sean Porter coming in in spots. But I don't think it will be frequent enough to, to really hurt Sean Porter and to do damage in the long term. So, Showtime Sean Porter, by unanimous decision, if I had to call the rounds down, I'd say I'd give it to Sean Porter by eight rounds to four. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the championship rounds in this fight going to look like, though. I want to see how, because there's rumors, there's talks that, you know, the, Kenny Porter is trying to put more boxing ability into Sean Porter. 
Will he not come out as aggressive as early and conserve himself for later on in the fight? Or will he blow his load early? I don't know. So it's going to be interesting to see how the championship rounds go in this fight. Will Andre Berto be able to counter him better? Will Andre Berto be able to hit him coming in better? Will Andre Berto actually become the aggressor in this fight? Those are all areas that I'm not sure. But I think the championship rounds would tell those. So I'm waiting, really waiting to see this fight. That's my prediction, y'all. Eight rounds to four, Showtime, Sean Porter. It's going to be a good fight. I think we're going to be extremely entertained. I'm expecting fireworks. Um, shout out to Al Heyman and the PBC for putting this one on. Just like Andre Berto said, he was the, the bearer of the news of, hey, Al said everybody got to fight everybody. Well, couldn't be more evident in this particular fight with Andre Berto and Sean Porter. Made the best man win. So to the next video, Main Man Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man Made Man Boxing Forum. Google Plus, Main Man Made Man. Always good to see good fighters in the ring with one another, man. This is always good. So this is going to be easily, hands down, the biggest test for Andre Berto ever since he originally lost his title a few years back. This is going to be the biggest test he's had on his road to recovery. And this is going to be the one fight that Showtime Sean Porter needs to really get back into the elite conversation and to actually pivot himself to a title fight. Because, I mean, if he loses this, oh, it's going to be tough for Showtime Sean Porter. That's all I'm going to say. So to the next video, peace out.